right, and welcome to the TSG Multimedia Video Podcast for May 1st. Happy May Day, everybody. This is John sitting here with... Dan. As usual, and we are looking at a wine train boxcar. Yeah. HO scale. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. But it seems to have picked up some debris along the track, (laughs) like a big old piece of plywood or something. Yeah, well, this is a... This is a, an old idea um, that I did not invent. It's been around a long time. Um, it's basically a track cleaning car. Oh, yes. Now, it didn't start out as a track cleaning car. It started out as a souvenir box car from the wine train, which I uh, one time when I rode the wine train, I got the little box car for, you know, in the for gift the shop. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of, I think it's an, it's an Atherne blue box, really old. You know, it's got like, you know, molded on ladders and everything, and um, doesn't look like one of your normal. No, it, it it isn't. It's not very detailed, and 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 the paint job I think is totally fake. Um, you know, it's, well, it's a souvenir box mm-hmm. car. It's not, but anyway, um, the you know you could, but you know, cars like this. The point is that the car, cars like this are good candidates for making a track cleaning car or something like that out of it. Okay, because. It's not like a ni- really nice high end model. You don't want to. I, I wouldn't want to take a forty dollar box car and start drilling holes in it. That for that, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, ruin it with the thing on the bottom. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I think that also don't you need to add weight to these things so that it gets pressure or how? Do yeah, you add? I actually, um, we can show that here. I'll turn it over. All this is. Oh, the weights on the board is. Well, there's there's a couple of things about this. This is just actually this isn't even attached. This is nothing more than a little piece of masonite, mm-hmm. okay, that I cut that's just a little bit wider than the track. Obviously, there's a couple of nails, which I just epoxied I see that. To, the, um, to the masonite. And I use nails with a fairly big head. I think these are roofing nails or something. Yes, they are. But that gives them more stability. than you know, If you used a nail with a little tiny head, it would be hard to get it to be stable, you know, upright like that. And then I added a couple of stick-on weights, and that's just to give the pad a little bit more pressure on the track because there's actually no pressure coming from the car this just rides free Mm -hmm. and all I did with the car was basically drill a couple of holes in the bottom to uh, let the nails come up so all the car is really doing is dragging this around the car isn't putting any pressure on this and and this isn't putting any pressure on the car because if it did it might derail the car Um, now what I did have to do if you notice the, the floor of the car is white Yes, it is. Yeah. Now, originally, the floor of this car, I think, was a metal weight. But since I don't have a machine shop drilling through steel uh, to accommodate (laughs) these nails wasn't really something I I was capable of doing when I made this. So um, I changed the floor to plastic and drilled in that. And then what I did was I added some extra weight inside the car. This is actually a fairly hefty car now. But I put the weight over the trucks. So there's weight on each end, and yeah, it's balanced. That'll help it not derail, right? Right, because with the plastic floor like this, if I hadn't had it weight, it would, this car would weigh nothing. It would probably derail every five seconds. Um, the other thing I did was to, um, to change it over to add, add metal wheels, okay, which all of my rolling stock has metal wheels, and I added KD couplers mounted at the proper height um, so that it's, you know, it's a good operating car. Mm. And... You know, all you have to do is just, you know, stick this in here and put it on the track, and it runs around. As you can see, this one's been run around a few times. And if this gets too dirty, you can just sand it. Oh, right. And and clean it up. The other thing is, I don't know if it shows on the camera, but the edges of this are slightly beveled. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I just see that. I sanded that a little bit. And the reason for that is if you have just a blunt edge, it may catch irregularities in the track mm-hmm. and derail or something like that yeah. yeah so you could even actually it might even be a little better i didn't do it but it might even be a little better to round it off yeah so it was really smooth like a like a ski or something um but anyway now i found that these cars aren't really good if your track is super dirty to begin with yeah but if your track is um relatively clean and you run one of these around every few days it helps to keep it clean so it's it's good for maintenance yeah. if, if your track is like really you know grossly dirty so you can, you can see the dirt this isn't going to fix it but you know for ordinary you know day-to-day cleaning this is a pretty good thing and what i actually used to do 
I actually have two of these. I, I don't know where the other one is. Right now it's put away someplace. Um, I, but anyway, I have two of these cars. And I would get at least two locomotives because because these cars are heavy and they got this pad drag and it actually took a couple of locomotives oh. to move them. But I would put one car in the front and one car in the back of the diesels so that they're, the diesels were basically sandwiched between the box cars. Right. So you'd have one, basically that put, puts one pad in front of the train and one pad behind it. And I would just run that around the entire layout when I had a bigger layout. And, uh, you know, do that every few days and it actually kept it pretty clean. What did damage anything if you use like a really really fine grit sandpaper on it or is that um, something you could I don't think I you'd want to right wouldn't it like take the track down a little well every time you ran it, it would put little scratches in the rails which isn't always a good thing to do um, mm -hmm. although if you're like me and you hand lay track and you, you're gonna file in parts of it anyway so um, I don't know some people are very averse to putting any kind of scratches in the railhead uh, you could though, yeah. And you yeah. could you could probably also put some kind of a cloth pad on this or something. Although I'd be careful of what kind of cloth you use because it would, you know, the wrong kind of threads. cloth would would shred and yeah. fray and all that. So um, you know, you could always experiment with different things. Um, and sometimes also, you, if you want to, you could spray the masonite with some electrical contact cleaner before you run, set it out and run it around, which I think is basically like an alcohol solution mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, but uh, anyway, it's a fairly, uh, you know, fairly inexpensive thing to do. I mean, it's, I don't think this cost me much of anything, really. I already had the box car, you know, I already had the couplers and wheels laying around, and this was just a scrap from something. So, right. you know, it's not like it was a big, big chore to make it or anything. I think it did it probably less than a day. But, you know, it's a good little tool to have. And I, you could probably, you know, you could make one of these in any scale. This happens to be HO, but you, you could make one, uh, you know, an o, o scale or even N might work. I, I don't know about the the weight would be the only issue with N. But, yeah, um, know. you know, I haven't tried making one in N scale, but you probably could or something like it. But anyway, it's just, uh, you know, one of those little simple things you can do to help uh, keep... Keep the track clean. The other thing is, of course, I would always recommend is using metal wheels on all the rolling stock because plastic wheels are gunk magnets. <laughs> um, whereas metal, you know, the metal on metal contact, if, if all your trains have all metal wheels and you're run, running around, free, you know, with fairly often, just that alone helps to keep the track clean because you got the metal to metal contact. So make sure you make a note of that. If you have a train layout, you need to use it a lot. Yeah. It's to keep the track clean. So when your yeah. wife comes down and bother you about playing with your train too much, you can tell her you have to, to keep the track clean. Right. Or your husband, very, maybe. You yeah, never know, Very right? important, yeah. Could, yep, could be it's anybody. Very, very important. If anyone complains, yeah. that, that's safer, right? That covers, mm -hmm. that covers all <laughs> genders and possibilities. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, that was my uh, thing for this month. All right, so I guess that'll do it for this month's video podcast. Make sure you tune into the audio podcast on the 15th. And I've been trying to remember to remind people, if you have a question or a comment, email it to us, podcast at tsgmultimedia.com. Don't just leave a comment in the YouTube. We probably won't see it. And uh, I guess that's it. We'll see you on the 15th, and then the first of next month will be our next video podcast. So thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks. 